On today's episode of Locked On Suns, we are headed into the All-Star break. How do we feel about the Phoenix Suns? We'll go back in time a year. We'll go back in time four months and take stock of the vibes heading into this week-long off day for the Phoenix Suns. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons, a writer over at suns.com and the host of the Just Basketball Show wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for making Locked On Suns your first listen to kick off your Friday. We are free and available everywhere, including YouTube. So just Hit that follow or subscribe button wherever you're finding the show. Get a new episode in your feed every single Monday through Friday. Become an everydayer and get locked on the Phoenix Suns right here with this show all season long. Gabe Guerrero is joining us today for the first time. He is one of the hosts over at the Suns Valley Podcast. Does excellent YouTube content over on their YouTube channel, live streams during games, and more. Very excited to have Gabe on to just get an overview of where things stand, I think, with the Suns. A couple new additions, some nice winning basketball lately. I'm going to give the people the standings this time last year, Gabe, but before we go that far back, if I were to tell you preseason, right before things start off, that the Suns would go into the All-Star break at 33-22, and 22, healthy, Fifth in the West, how would you feel? Would you have been excited, disappointed? Where are you feeling right now with these guys? It it would have been disappointment, <clears throat> but really, it would have been. I had high hopes. I think everybody yeah. saw super team, especially when a national media that normally doesn't have very many great things to say about us when they were looking at Yuta Watanabe and Kata Base Diop as, oh my gosh, can you believe that the Suns got these highly coveted, you know, Eric Gordon, you bring in Eric Gordon, who I'm still a very big fan of. I have very uh, high belief in Eric Gordon, but we got, we did so well. And it wasn't just us blowing smoke on ourselves. It was the national media praising us for this team of three point shooters and three and D guys that we had surrounded the big three with. And it was supposed to be this. And it was, supposed to be. and so when I hear you say our record, I think, yeah, I probably would have been dumb enough to expect a crazy record. Like I might or might not have questioned out loud if we were going to uh break our record from a couple of years ago when we were number one of the west and we won 64 games like yeah I'm, yeah, yeah i hope nobody can find it but yeah i think i think i'd be disappointed and wrongfully so because you know there are extenuating circumstances there are and i think to look like obviously the injuries and the a lot of the bottom of the roster not working out. There's a lot of things you can point to. But I think another one, frankly, I, as much as Suns fans might not want to hear it, it might not be the most like optimistic answer to put out there, but the West is just better. You know, like the, the conference is just better. And especially, I think, as far as regular season winning is concerned, like I'm not positive yet what I'm going to be expecting of Minnesota or Oklahoma City in May, but right now they they're just they're just kind of machines, and that that's just going to knock you down a peg. The Suns have already lost to the Thunder once. They've lost to the Clippers twice. They've lost to the Nuggets once. So all these teams ahead of them that are just more kind of finely tuned machines in the regular season, to me that's that's a big part of of where they are at least uh, in the standings, just as much as injuries or, ever, or or anything else. But let's go back to this time last year though, because. The Suns were 
pretty close to where they are now. They had only played 40, uh, well, no, they had played 59 games, actually. Um, I think 58 games heading into the, into the All-Star break. And they were fourth in the West and no fifth in the West and Denver, Memphis, Sacramento, and Dallas were all ahead of them. Pretty similar to where they are now, except I think the teams that I just said maybe scare you a little less than the ones above the Suns now. I just wanted to pose the question because I think back to this time last year when Durant has the ankle thing on the day he's supposed to debut and the Suns before that had felt completely hopeless. I think we would have all agreed this time last year, we maybe felt worse overall, even though there was the hope of Durant. And then at the end of the season, they still pushed the eventual champions to six games in the second round. So it's like, if we feel better now than we did then, and I'm not sure how you feel about that, then I kind of allow myself to get even more excited about the postseason, even if that all sounds a little counterintuitive. Are you following my logic? Do you feel better maybe now about the playoffs than you did last year about the playoffs? <clears throat> That's an interesting question. Um, it's just, to me, it's so hard to compare the two teams. And maybe maybe I should be more hyped. Maybe we really should be more hyped about this record being so close to what we were last year because last year, that was a Suns team that had been together. You know, that team, there was a lot of pieces on that team that were in the finals versus the Bucks, And then this team is a 13 out of 15 new players carried over from last year. So maybe it's not that big of a deal that we're in the same spot we were last season because we, we're just a mixture of absolutely new players that have never played together. You know, you combine Bradley Beal being injured a bunch in the beginning of the season, Booker being out, Durant, they all have been splitting time, you know, being injured. Maybe I should be more excited about the playoffs this season. You know, we're definitely trending in the right direction. And we had Chris Paul. We had that stable coach on the court. We don't even have a point guard on our roster right now, as far as I'm concerned. I know Saban Lee balled out last night, but <laughs> I don't feel like we really have a true point guard. And we're still able to get the same record-ish, almost. We're still in kind of the same spot. I think... I think maybe you just ex got me a little more excited about the playoffs to come. So, I don't think I said the record. This sounds crazy that the Suns would have played 60 games heading into the break, but I think that's what it was. They were 32 and 28 heading into the All-Star break last year. They are obviously 33 and 22 right now. They were again 5th in the Western Conference. They are 4th right now. They closed last season on a uh, I think it would be 13 and nine record down the stretch. I would imagine they're going to be better than, I mean, 13 and nine is a 59% winning percentage. Right now, the Suns have a 60% a winning percentage. I'd think that they'll be at an even better pace. Would it shock you if this team won 50 games this season? Only reason it would shock me, because they have the talent to do it, is we have apparently one of the toughest schedules upcoming of anyone left in the NBA. And that's what sucks about being injured early. Um, I guess it is better to be injured early in the season and let the guys learn how to play together without the stars and build camaraderie amongst the troops and whatnot. But <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know, man, 50 games. It's so they would have to be, close. It should be so easy. But it's 17 and 17 and 10. That would be the record down the stretch. They can do that. They can and they should. But that's going to involve beating a lot of good teams. I don't want to say that the Kings are who they were last year, but you're going to have to see a lot of those games like we just saw versus the Kings, where it's like, this is a good team. They're playing well, but we outlast them and we find a way. You're going to have to do that a lot because our, our, yeah. Schedule is loaded down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, just the first three weeks after the break, it's it's Dallas on the road, home Oklahoma City, Denver on the road, Boston on the road, Cleveland on the road, Milwaukee on the road. So it's not going to be easy. Real quick, 
before we get to Royce O'Neal and Thad Young, if I had to just ask you right now, do the Suns get further or do they fall short of game six of the second round based on everything we've seen, everything we know on February 15th of 2024? What would you tell me? I think it depends on the matchups. I mean, you said it. This Western Conference is brutal. The Eastern Conference is better now, but the Western Conference is also better. I mean, I feel bad trying to look at OKC and, and say, oh, they're not going to be. Because that's what people did to us. Nobody thought in 2021, like we were that OKC team. It's like, yeah, they're doing good now, but they don't have any experience. They're, OKC is really built like that. Um I'm not saying I, I would like OKC. Honestly, I would prefer a team with less playoff experience. Yeah. But if we get, I, I, I'm scared of Luca. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry that that man terrifies me because we've never had any. Even when we had Mikhail Bridges, one of the best defenders in the league, we still couldn't even think about stopping him. And now we don't have. I mean, Royce O'Neal, which we're going to talk about, that's our best defender. I don't want to put Royce in a situation where we're telling him, Hey, this all depends on you. If if for some reason we get matched up against the nuggets early, come on. That's not, this team actually needs a little bit of fortune when it comes to who they go up against. Like, I don't want to rehash too much history, but that 2021 run was so perfect for the Suns. You you go up against a Lakers team who I think we could have beat regardless of injury, but we got injury. AD, their mm-hmm. most important player, goes out with the groin. Uh, next, next, we had Jamal Murray-less Nuggets yeah. before they turned into a, a psychotic machine of a basketball team that just annihilates people. Then you had no – it was no Kawhi, right? Or, yep. uh, yeah, it was no Kawhi, but they had Paul George. Yep. And then we were playing the Bucks, who, who Giannis we thought we're going to be without Giannis yeah. potentially. Dude, I mean, how did he come back from that backwards <laughs> knee injury? So I'm not saying we need that much luck, but I taking the champs to the, to to six when nobody else could. It's not that bad when you look at the roster we had last season. That's where I'm at. I mean. Right now, the Suns will play the Nuggets in the first round. I think mm. that's a that's a worst case scenario, right? But I think <laughs> that's that much more of an impetus to say, hey, like let's actually get this thing churning and and maybe be a little more adventurous with lineups and different things to to treat every game as a must win. Because even if that's the opponent, getting home court advantage against Denver would go a long way, right? Like it is that important at this point. They're only three games back. I've said a couple times this week that I'm not. Super optimistic they can pass up those teams, but hey, you can't, you can't, uh, you got to try. But let's talk about how some of that adventurousness could materialize. Royce O'Neal, Thad Young, two new additions. How much of an impact can they make? How much better can they make this team when we do get to the postseason? We'll get into all of that next. First, today's show brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all year. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week, Josh and eBay Motors are going to provide you players that are guaranteed fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked this week for eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Benedict Matherin, still on Josh's list. I think he missed their most recent game, but... He is a bucket getter, and Buddy Heald is gone. Cody Martin, starting at point guard right now, even though he's not really a point guard. LaMelo Ball is out. Gordon Hayward is also gone. He will get minutes. Taylor Hendricks, who we just saw against the Jazz last week, he is playing heavy minutes for that team after a whole season of not, so you got to get him in your roster. Asar Thompson, who we just saw, starting again. Marvin Bagley, somehow against all odds, still a starting center in the NBA over in Washington. All these guys getting reps, getting time. That's what you really need in fantasy basketball, even if they're not great, great players. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball can help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. And that is, of course, the same with your vehicle. I have championed eBay Motors for a very long time. I have actually 
purchased parts from them, not just proclaiming their greatness, a flap down sun shield for the driver's side of my car so that I do not get beaten with the sunlight down into my eyes when I am driving. I have bought a wheel cover when mine fell off on the way to a Suns game one time. And that's the kind of thing that sometimes those odds and ends just aren't anywhere else. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly, whether it is a wheel cover like me or brake kits, LED headlights, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, with these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Let's keep it rolling here. So, uh, Gabe, if I were to just ask you this question point blank to open it up, give me your answer. Royce O'Neal is the what best player on the Suns right now? The number that you're going to give me best player on the Suns. So I thought about this for a little bit, and I'm thinking it's sixth. You got the big three. Mm -hmm. I would... Only list Nurkic over Grayson because of importance of position. Sure. And because I feel like you can slide Gordon into Grayson's role. And if Gordon starts getting the minutes that Grayson's been getting, I think Gordon comes out of his shell. And so I think Grayson's a little bit more replaceable. Like if if this was a different team and we had a backup center or two that we really desired to go to, I would put, you know, Grayson ahead of Nurk, but I go Nurk and then Grayson. And that does not mean that I want Thad coming off the bench because I think Thad's defense and three shooting, three point shooting ability is more important on this, you know, to start games with our defender, our best, our de facto best defender on the court, getting full minutes. And he's not a liability the way Okogi, God bless his soul has been sometimes for a lot of times from the corner three. I want that, that three point, uh, that open three that our offense uh, designs, right? Mm -hmm. You have to guard book. You have to guard Beal. You have to double Durant or book or Beal. And then that's giving someone an open shot. I, I, I trust Royce in that. Yeah. He hasn't given me as much reason to trust him to knock it down like Grayson has, but his defense, he's bigger. He's, he can actually guard the wings, and that's you know one of the most important things to be able to guard in today's NBA. So I'm going to go sixth. Where do you have it? I might go. I might even go higher. And Ooh. so here's here's my reason, right? So one is about the Nurkic point you made. I agree. The like the fact that they don't have a great backup makes me a little nervous. To deprioritize him. I saw somebody in the YouTube comments of the show I did yesterday where they were like, because I was saying Nurkic might not be a fit in every series. They're like, he's going to play in every series. You're being crazy. I know he's going to play. Of course he's going to play. I think he'll start almost every single playoff game for this team. But I do think there will be series where even though he's the only center, they might just say screw it anyway. And so that makes the wing depth on the team a little more important. And then the other point you made of the wing defense is the other reason. I've been a defender of Gordon for a similar reason. I think his defense gets underrated. I don't think he's a stopper. I don't think he's great. I don't think he's any kind of dominant guy and he's going to be a a lockdown dude on Luka or anything like that in a playoff series. But he's stable. He communicates, which is a problem for this team. He's big. He's strong. He can guard bigger players. They need that. And... What I think Royce O'Neal will do as we watch more and more is the Suns, before they got him, like they couldn't guard a Luka type or a, let's say, Jamal Murray. Kawhi, PG. Yeah, any of those guys. But my main thing is like now they can at least guard wings. They at least have somebody to put on wings. The the little guys will still be a problem. I, you know, 
luckily, like John Morant's not going to be a factor in the playoffs this year. But like Kyrie Irving, for instance, like they don't really, he's not the biggest threat on that team, mm-hmm. but they don't really have a, a perfect guy to do that. Steph, as another example. But they at least now have somebody to guard some of the players. <laughs> and that's like, it's basic, but that that feels big to me. So I just think there's going to be a lot of series where this team plays very small with Durant at center or some combination of maybe the guy we're about to talk about next and Durant, maybe Bull Bull, whatever, but small units with Durant basically as a rim protector as the biggest guy on the court where Royce will have to be a real point of attack defender. And to me, his ability to do that and knock down some open shots and play with the high IQ, be physical, all those things, I might have him above Nurkic. So I might have it as the big three, Mm. Grayson, I would even put O'Neal over Gordon there, um, like you, which I think is what you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that would mean O'Neal. Do I have him fourth? Then that feels crazy to say, but maybe the better, the better, the distinction might be valuable versus better. Right? That's always kind of hard. But that, that's I might have him as the fourth most valuable guy if he can keep up what he's been doing. Ooh. Okay. So, couple things. Gordon, I feel like has replaced the defensive role to some degree that Chris Paul did. Remember Chris Paul obviously had lost his lateral quickness a little bit, but he still played the passing lanes well and got steals. And I know this because I use your fantastic sponsor prize picks almost every game. And one of the things that I consistently pick is Gordon Steele's because the dude gets steals. I don't know how he's doing it. Sometimes he gets a lot of blo- like consistently will get blocks every every game, but he gets steals and Chris Paul got steals. I mean, what did Gordon have like two, three steals last night in, in limited minutes? I don't know how he's doing it, but he's not terrible. And then I want to know what you think about J.O. Josh Okogi as the defender of the smaller guys, because that's the, that's the one part of J.O.'s game that I have not soured on. I love the way he guards Steph Curry. Uh, I, I love the way he guards Jamal Murray. He can't stop Luca. He can't do anything versus Luca. No one can. Um, He can't stop Kawhi. He can't stop Paul George, but when it comes to the point guards and the small, you know, I think that's Josh's one true gift that's going to keep him in the lead. It'd be yeah. great if he could go back to shooting and scoring like he used to be. His confidence there is just shot. Mm-hmm. But what do you think about Josh as the small defender? I think he's going to have to play. I mean, I, I said I, I almost talked myself into the other day with uh, with Brandon that I – could see Josh starting playoff games for this team. And then, you know, we saw a little bit more of, of O'Neal and I'm kind of, I think he'll be able to do enough against the bigger guys that it won't be necessary for a Kogi to just be anyone they play. It has to be him no matter who. I think it is now back to down to what you just said, which is really just those teams that have big threats of small players. You know, I guess where I go with that is, I might be naive. I know Suns fans have been frustrated with Booker's defense, but there's still a part of me holding out hope that what he did defensively at times in last year's playoffs, and yeah. frankly, most postseasons he's been able to to step up, that he can be... Curry's a big ask, but Murray, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, that he can be the guy who gets some time on those players to make a Kogi even less necessary. But it's going to be an issue. I mean, this team has holes, and I think guarding great downhill, small point of attack players is one of them. And I, I, they just might not have an answer for that. And the answer might be score one thirty. You know? Would you have, if you were on the court, would you have gambled for that that pass that Steph caught? Uh, no, but that's very easy for me to say. I just, I think Beal, uh, I think Beal thought it was a bad pass, but it was Why, actually what? a really good pass. <laughs> it was so bad, it was good. He, yeah, like Podzemski yeah. got lucky. Would you have rather? I mean, I, do, I, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out why Frank didn't put a defensive lineup in of Nas, just because technically he's a decent <laughs> defender. Yeah, Royce Okogi. Heck, maybe you put Bull Bull in there for a shot contest. Yeah. Uh, I, I, 
on the court, I would have made the gamble that Beal made, but I'm yeah. not a good I'm not a good defender. <laughs> I make mistakes all the time when I play. Yeah, I hear that, and and they they had a timeout in their pocket and everything. That you know, it's hard for me to really rip my hair out too much on Steph Curry slaying a team's hopes and dreams that that feels kind of unavoidable. Like yeah. if you're telling me he can do it against Beal and book defensively, but not Nasir little or something, I'm like, okay, you know, probably can still do it against Nasir little, but let's talk about one more addition to the team, which is going to be Thaddeus young. Sometime we assume he has not officially been signed yet, but he is reportedly joining this team and there's been no indication otherwise. So how does he fit? Does he, actually look like a lock to play every night and what will his role be i have not talked about that at all so we'll get into him next first today's show brought to you by robin hood did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can also still have an ira robin hood has the only ira that gives you a three percent boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to robin hood gold but get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement counts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match, and Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to that IRA and that 3% match. It's all about options, people. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. That, of course, is R-O-B-I-N-H-O-O-D.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply, and now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. All right, let's close it out, Gabe. So, I frankly wasn't expecting Thaddeus Young to be an option. I thought the Suns might trade for him. I thought the Raptors might just keep him because he frankly was playing pretty well, and, and it felt like they needed him. But then they get Kelly Olynyk, pretty similar players in terms of their role, just ball moving, playmaking, bigs, and Olynyk's obviously better, shoots it better, bigger player, etc. And then Thaddeus Young apparently is going to end up here, and I honestly sort of think about it the same way I did the Royce O'Neal thing, which is more of the same. But I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean he's unnecessary. I don't mean he's not going to help. I just mean it gives the Suns more options. More different types of small ball lineups that they can go to. Potentially big ball lineups. I don't know. Um, and I talked about this a little yesterday on the podcast, which is the Suns are... Frank Vogel's job is both easier because there's more of those options, but also harder because... You got to find the right ones that work. So, how much do you expect that to play? How much? How big of a role do you think he'll he'll play on this team joining so late in the season? Well, it's always up in the air with Frank, right? I mean, Frank is going to do what Frank wants to do with these lineups. Um, sometimes his lineups are terrific. Sometimes he makes guys wait. I mean, he had me convinced that Bull Bull was a bust, and I don't think Bull Bull is a bust. I think Bull uh, Bull actually really fits. Um, he refused to play Metu. And then when he did, Metu started doing some things for us. I mean, he refuses to play Nas. And maybe you're not high on Nas, but and a, and a lot of that might have been that they were really thinking that they were going to be able to trade him. So they didn't want to injure him, whatever that was. I don't know what Frank is going to want from that. I, I would have thought that Roddy, that David Roddy would have gotten in the game last night when we were up almost 40 points in the third quarter, but he waited until garbage, garbage minutes to put Roddy in. Yeah. So I, I I could see a transition period where Thad comes to the team and Frank makes him wait. Like you got to learn the system. You got to learn our rotations, but I think Thad fits like a glove, a, a, an older, more, you know, broken in glove, but a glove, I, his strength I think counteracts his lack of height a little bit to the point where he's going to be able to play that backup five and, and really push Eubanks as far as like, which guy do we want to go to? He's just mm -hmm. smart. I think people are going to be shocked at how good of a passer he is. He's a connector, much like we're yeah. seeing from Royce O'Neal. He, he talks well, 
He he's very vocal. He's just he's been in the league for so long. He's played well over a thousand NBA games and 33,000 minutes. This guy was Wolf. when he was younger, he was healthy. Like he played Oh yeah. every game. It's uh it's pretty impressive the resume he's put together. Yeah, I'm I'm optimistic about it too. I think again, like I said, I, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it cuz I just wasn't really expecting it and then the more that I have the past couple of days, I'm like, great, you know, sign me up because yeah, the defense like I shared with uh, the Locked on Suns insider community and people can sign up there at the link in the show description below or at joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Suns as I throw that plug in there. Um, I tweeted or I, I shared with those people, texted out a message from Sean Woodley who hosts our Locked on Raptors show about both Thaddeus Young and Otto Porter when, you know, they yeah. were both looking like they were going to be gone. And he was bigger, higher on Thad for sure, but he said as a as a center, he he is definitely exploitable on the defensive end. But that's fine because you're talking about a player who is going to be, you know, if he plays in the playoffs, 10, 15 minutes, right? Because I think we would all agree that, you know, like we just talked about, O'Neal is higher up in the pecking order than him. If it is a Nurkic type of series, Nurkic is going to have to play a lot of minutes. I agree with you that Bull has earned the opportunity to be in the plans at least, even if not every series is going to make sense for him and he has weaknesses. So you're talking about a, a ninth, tenth, eighth, whatever it is type of guy. So yeah, that player has weaknesses. Like, of course he does, but mm -hmm. he can. he's always been a good steals guy. He still has a steal rate over 2%, which is better than most guys on the Suns. He can block some shots. He has length. He's a smart player. So the defense, I think, if they can find ways to just sort of have it be passable, switch a lot, have Durant and Bowl out there with him as secondary rim protectors and, and everything else, I think the offense will really, really shine. And uh, you mentioned that learn the system. I think you meant defensively because I'm not sure this team really has much of a system on offense. <laughs> but I think he will make them have one a little bit more. You know, like he he'll be similar to Nurkic in a way of getting other guys going and hitting cutters and setting guys up. And and they haven't had that off the bench because Eubanks is not that player. Bull's not that player. Durant really isn't that player in terms of you know being a, a playmaker. He he's out there to score. So I think that can go a long way. Being that connective piece on both ends, like you said, I, I I really do think he'll be a part of this rotation down the stretch, and I would not be surprised if we look up in April or May and we're like, was Thaddeus Young just an X-Factor winning a playoff game? And mm. I think you will be. That would be awesome. Yeah, he gets a lot of hockey assists. I, I love players like that on this team that doesn't have a point guard. It's so nice to have players like Nurk were great passers, willing passers, Royce O'Neal. Not only am I learning that he, I knew he was a willing passer. I knew he wasn't selfish, but he's actually a talented passer. And that's another thing you're getting from Thad. And it's like, when you're trying to win a championship, you're, you're probably going to be, when you're trying to get through the playoffs, you're probably going to be playing the players with experience over, I mean, obviously I don't think Roddy is going to even touch the floor in the playoffs unless it's a blowout one way or another, but yeah, I think he's going to get decent minutes. I mean, it would have been great if we could have got him a couple of years ago when we wanted him though. I'll tell you that. I know it's funny, right? He's, he is very much a Monty Williams type guy. He's similar to like the role Sharich played or, or different players like that. Um, But yeah, look, any guy who can stay in the league this long, I, I tend to think that he's figured some things out. And so, you know, coming back to a winning environment, he hasn't been on a winning team and, and the Raptors aren't terrible, but since like he was in Indiana like five years ago. So I think this will be a great opportunity for him. He obviously got to pick where he wanted to go when you get bought out. That's obviously part of it. So you got to expect guys are excited about where they're landing. We'll see what it looks like, but I'm optimistic that is Gabe Guerrero. Thank you so much for joining, man. Um, where, what's the story with the hat? Did you pay to get that uh, touched up, or did that come that way? <laughs> Dude, I got this from the Suns team shop. It was... Really? It was just... I don't think I've on, seen that before. I, I got it online, and it said, you know, 
not many available left. I just was like, oh, I just rushed and got it. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know if they make it anymore. I like it. I uh, like it. I definitely it, don't think I've seen it. Uh, but you know, I it's a rare one. I don't go to the team shop. Maybe I'm missing out For on these sure. things. But no, but I mean, I, I like ordered it. it online though. Yeah, I yeah. got it online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll have to have you back on down the stretch of the season, maybe postseason time. Check out his show and YouTube channel over at Suns Valley Podcast. That'll wrap us up for the week, folks. Don't forget to sign up for Locked on Suns Insiders to get in the know about the Suns all the time. That link is in the show description below to sign up. And hit follow or subscribe on this channel if you have not already. Be back next week as we make our way through the All-Star break. I'll have a recap of Booker and KD's night on Sunday. And much more little temperature checks like this. Hoping to get Steven Perjone back on and maybe a couple of other guests. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the All-Star game. I will catch you next week.